This is a tutorial for the Edge Details tool you can find in my cloth sewing toolbox available on Gumroad and Blender Market. This tool allows to create fully procedural hem and other kind of geometry on the edge of your meshes in a way that is fully stable with any kind of animation. It also creates a bunch of attributes for custom shading and allows to add stitches in the same modifier or create a geometry for bias binding, piping and so on. So once you added the toolbox in the file path of the Asset Brother, I recommend to use the link import method so that you can more easily update the asset pack and have all your files updating in the same way. So now I will just drag my edge details tool on my test geometry and let's have a look at all the parameters. So first I'm going to make some vertex loop edge selection on which to apply the modifier. And let's apply this selection into the edge selection input of this modifier. Now right away some geometry has been created, but you can't really see it because the default parameters are really small and my mesh right now measures about 2 by 2 meters. So we'll just really quickly rescale it by a factor of 0.1. Now we can see everything better and we can also take a look at the first parameter which is apply scale. So basically, this is a way to implement the apply scale you can do with Ctrl A. So this does about the same, but right inside the modifier, which is pretty useful when you are working with alambic cache, with non-uniform scale and so on. So as you can see, if I apply scale, the general look of everything is the same as just toggling this Boolean value. And to have a better look at everything, I will also enable the viewport display wireframe inside the object properties. And let's also add a subdivision surface modifier before this, I will just set the boundary smooth to keep corners. So for this all to work properly, the main prerequisite is to have a properly set up UV map, as you can see right here. And by properly set up UV map, I just mean a UV map with no overlaps and everything being about as uniform as it can be. And once you have it set up, you can input your UV map name into this UV map input parameter. So if your mesh comes from Houdini, for example, you may have to set up the default UV map name of Houdini, which would just be a lowercase UV. And as you can see, even at this stage, if I don't set up a UV map, the result is already not working properly. The next parameter is UV scale. So this is basically just a correspondence of scale between your world space object and its scale into the UV space. So for example, for now, my mesh is measuring about 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters, but its UV unwrapped version measures about 0.5 by 0.5 units. So right here, I would have to put 0.2 divided by 0.5, which is the scale factor between the two coordinate space. And this will mainly be useful to compute the UV position of all the newly created edges. Next, let's go into the parameters for the hems themselves. The first one is to select the hem profile into a bunch of into a bunch of predator from a bunch of preset hem profiles. Here we have a single hem, double hem, single flange, teardrop, rope, simple binding, BSB which is a binding with a hem on one side, BSC with two hems, a kind of waistband hem with added geometry, and two pieces waistband. You can also set your custom profile curve by selecting a profile curve into this input and I will show you how to set this up later. Next we have the hem profile resampling which you can set to any value to get the look you want with zero being the base resolution of the profile curve but I usually like to set it to around 32. Next we have the curve reverse threshold so for this I need to explain how this works. The modifier you will get your selected vertex group and convert this to a curve to get some curve dependent data on the edge of your mesh. So that will be the tangent and normal direction of the curve. But because of the way Blender converts a selection of vertices to a curve, the direction might not be always consistent. So for some curve, the normal direction may be facing outwards, but from some other, it may be facing inwards into the mesh. But for everything to work properly, I need everything to be more consistent. So I am basically using this curve reverse threshold to move the curve inside of the modifier and check if we are still inside the mesh or not. And if not, we can reverse the direction of the curve. So you may not have to change this value, but if the UV unwrapped version of your mesh has some other UV islands really close to your mesh, it may cause some issues and you may want to lower this value. Next, we have the parameters for the general look of the hem itself. First, we have the length of the hem. So this is pretty self-explanatory. And we also have its thickness. 
which can of course go into a negative value if needed. The next parameters are regarding the fillet, which are basically the radiuses that are put on other side of the hem. So here under the hood, here, so basically under the hood, all the profile curves are just curves with straight angles, and it is inside the modifier that they are first beveled and then resampled. So basically, if I set the fillet resolution or its radius to zero, we'll have something which is very squared, and by changing this resolution, we can have a result which is more visually pleasing, and it is the same for the radius of this fillet, which we can set however we want. The next parameter is deformation correction. So this is needed if our mesh has some really strong deformation near the edge on which we want to add the hem, which I am demoing right now. So right now it is set to null, but we have three other methods to correct the look of the hem on this side. The first one is proximity based, which will just get the nearest point of the mesh to our hem. So when the shape is curved inward, because all the points are corrected along the, near, along the normal of the nearest point on the surface, we may have some crossing of the points, which is the case right here. But the behavior is slightly different when the shape is in the other direction, even though we still have some issues with this proximity-based kind of control. So that's why we have the next deformation correction mode, which is UV-based, which is way more stable. And it is also for this parameter that the UV scale is quite important, because with the wrong UV scale, the scale of the correction will be wrong. But when the scale is set properly, the correction is really effective. But again, if the resolution of the hem is way bigger than the resolution of the base mesh, we will also have some kind of slight issues crossing over of the points if the shape is curved into the other direction. So in this case, for now, we don't have any other way to correct this than to lower the hem profile resampling. The next method is raycast based, which gives about the same result as the proximity based one, as you can see right here, but it is computed a bit differently because instead of getting the nearest position on the surface, it will check along the normal of the newly created hem, which might work better in some cases, but can also raise some other issues. And as you can see, if the angle is way too big, we have some other kind of issues. And all those modes of correction will be improved on in into the future, but for now, it can give some pretty nice ways to have better control on the look of everything in some edge cases like here. Next is the UV extrusion mode. So for this, I need to go into the shading tab and let's create a simple new material. Go into rendered view and here we just get an image texture, make a new texture, UV grid. And for the vector input, I will take the attribute called UV map, which is of type vector like this. And here to take a look at this result, make sure to use the UV map, which is set into the output attributes, which I will get into a bit later. And here we have our UV map visualized. So this is the look of the UV map before, and when the hem is applied, by default, the UVs are extended, as you can see right here. But we can also set it to mirror, so that it will use the same UV coordinates as before the hem, which we may see a bit better with the color grid, as by extending it will create some new UV coordinates, and mirror it will use the coordinates of the point of the hem, but on the inside of the mesh. We can also have a look at this with the cut UV sim modifier, which allows to unwrap everything. And here you can see that if it is set to mirror, all the UV of the hem are directed into the mesh, but if it is set to extend, they are going outwards. And finally, we have two Boolean values to skip the extrusions of the hem on certain cases. So for example, let's add another edge detail modifier on a selection which will be on the edges on this side. Let's call this vertex group selection first hems select it right here, and let's put this modifier before the one I put earlier. Here I will also double the thickness of my original hem, which is now the secondary hem. And here we can see that we have some issues, which are quite expected because now the way Blender works is that even though my original edge selection for the secondary hem is like this, because we extruded a first hem first, the selection is actually increased onto the hem itself. So now even the side of the hem we ha will have some extruded hem on top of them. So here you can correct the visual aspect by changing the order of the hems. So in some cases you may want not to extrude the hems on hems that are already being created. 
So for this, you could just toggle this value, which will just create a secondary hem on the original selection of everything. And, I'll, and we also have another toggle, which works the same for the seams. And let's move on to the next parameter, which are the floating settings. So those settings are only enabled when you have some geometry, which I call floatings. So this is the geometry, which is created by, for example, the waistband. And note that for this geometry, the deformation correction might also not work as expected because of the way the coordinates are extruded. For this kind of hem, which is in this case the waistband, we have the hem of the main mesh and we have an additional geometry, which I will call a floating geometry. And for this, I added some additional control, such as binormal offset, which can offset this floating geometry in a direction facing outward of the mesh in a tangent direction. We also have a way to add a normal offset and a way to twist this added geometry along the edge direction. If needed, we can also override this material with some other material for this added geometry. So this way you can also use this setting to add edge bias binding or piping on your mesh. The next tab are for what I call pinch settings. So this is basically to add some really simple additional control to the shape of the hem without having to manually create a custom hem profile for now. So with this, we can basically pinch or expand the shape of the profile curve at three different points along the profile, which are the start, the middle, and the end of the seam. So with this, you can change the shape of all this and get some really different and more intricate shape really easily. You can also get some finer control by pre-subdividing the base curve, but this can get more expensive to compute. Next, we have all the settings to add some stitches along our selection, but I will not go further on the details of those settings in this video, because all those settings are the same that are implemented into the Stitch Details tool, which I talked about in a previous video. Next, I have some experimental animation settings, which can just grow in and out the hem themselves. So this might not be really useful or pretty, but it is what I used in the presentation video of this asset pack. And finally, we have the output attributes. And here there are quite a few of them. So I already showed you the UV map one, which you can access with the attribute node and get your UV map. And it is basically the original UV map you input right here, but including coordinates for the extruded geometry. Then we have a custom UV map for the hems themselves, which is called by default UV hem. And this gives a custom UV map for the hem, which is flowing all along the created geometry. So as you can see right here, we have a flowing UV map along this part of the hem and also along this edge. And this can be used to add intricate shading detail, especially with the shade sum data shading group, which I will go into in another video. But basically, this gives to every point of the mesh some attributes corresponding to the nearest point of the edge selection. And this is how far along the section we are, how far from the section we are, and the same in a tangent way. So that means that with all this, if you only take the X and Y coordinates, you can feel this as a UV map coordinates flowing along the selection. But if you only take the Y and Z coordinates and take the length of this vector, you can get a gradient to add some shading elements with some kind of proximity to the hem. So you can combine all this by using the color ramp as a factor to mix between your custom texture shaded along your selection and another value. But this texture can of course be a noise value or something like this to add some seam puckering and so on. But again, all this is already set up in the shade sum data, which I will get into later. Next, we have the extruded geometry, which by default is hem geometry, which is a boolean value set to true for all the extruded geometry, which makes up the hem. We have the same for the detached geometry, as you can see right here. Then because as I showed you earlier, Blender is expanding the original selection of our vertex group, which we can see if I set this to our original vertex group, we have way too many points that are selected. So we can get back our original selection with this attribute right here, which I just called hem in lowercase. And this only selects our base group. Then we have the new edge of the hem, which is right here, as you can see. So if you want to add some other attributes right on top of this, you can do this really easily. And then we have the process island. So if your mesh has a several mesh islands and some of them are not processed by this group, those will have a value of zero. So you can do some precise shading only on the part where some information were added. So as you can see right here, the islands that were not processed are the newly created floating geometry 
and this mesh island, which hasn't got any hems. And finally, we have a boolean value on the curves for the stitches if you enabled the stitches. And now, before showing you how to add custom profile curves to generate hems, I also want to show you that you don't necessarily have to select edge vertex group on the side of the mesh islands. You can also add to your selection some vertex group edge loops right inside the mesh and it will work just as well. So with this, you can really easily add pipings anywhere you want. And now let's add some custom profile curves. So for this, you can just generate a basic curve and remove all the points that are originally here. So for this, we need to have in mind a few things. First, the generating curve must be oriented along the positive Y axis for the direction of the hem and the up direction will be along the D axis. So all the points need to have a coordinate of zero along the X axis. And for this, you can check the direction of the curve by enabling the curve edit mode overlays and the normals and giving it some scale. So as you can see, we can see the direction of the curve. So now I can go to the X view and draw a first curve. And let's right away select this curve as my custom profile. And as you can see right here, it has selected my curve and extruded it as a hem. But as I oriented everything along the Y axis, it has only extruded it outwards. So here to do a more conventional hem, I can go like this and go right back. Now here I am drawing everything with the pencil curve, which is not really the best solution, because as I showed you earlier with the original parameters, and let's just remove all the pinching, we have a way to add some fillets right inside the modifier. So for this, it is best to use the curve pen and only select some points. But here, for some reason, the order of the curve is reversed, so you must start by the end of the curve. So if I want to do a double hem, I would have to draw it like this. And as you can see, it is showing up properly. Now by convention, if you only have one curve, the first two points, which are those two in my case, will be replaced by the original mesh. So only those parts will be extruded with the added radiuses. Now the interesting thing is when we have several curves. So if I add a secondary one by clicking on the side so I don't have any point selected, and if I draw again, it will add some floating geometry. So in this case, the first curve you always draw, which will have the index at zero, will always be the hem, and any additional curve will be floating geometry, and you can have any number of them. So now you may wonder how to have only floating geometry, and this is pretty simple. You just need to remove all the points from the first curve, except a single one. So if you have several curves in your profile curve, and the curve of index zero, so the first one you draw only has one point, this point will be used as a reference for the base position of the geometry around which to create all the floating geometry. As you can see right here, it is working properly. So with this, you can do about anything you want and get way more control than with the added pinch settings, which might also be enough in many scenarios. So that's about it for this tool. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any additional questions, make sure to leave them in the comments so that I will be able to improve the documentation and the asset pack in the future. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.